What's up guys, Fernan Ackerman here with Ben Jawolski, Wad Prep Headquarters. He's gonna take us through a few progressions. You heard him on the podcast a couple months ago. Well, now we're in person at his location. Super cool place and we're excited to show you around. I'm super stoked you guys are here. Welcome to my home. This is where all the magic happens. Come on inside. Welcome to the Best Hour of Their Day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez. And me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. boxes. Welcome to the Best Hour of Your Day. (gasps) The dog, more dogs. All right, Ben, this day and age, you could be working from home. What caused you to rent this awesome space? So I lived in Japan for three and a half years and was on a military base. And my office, which was just a spare bedroom that we didn't use, my office and fridge were far too close. And all that happened was, it was just very difficult for me to like truly unplug and be working or truly be working and not relaxing at the house. So I wanted to have a distinct separation. Wad prep has been growing the last several years. So like one of my main things was uh, I wanted to create my own like perfect oasis for working out and for shooting videos because I really didn't like having to rely on CrossFit gyms or random other gyms to like give me space that was quiet. It was just sticky. So the bottom line is I moved here. I, also The Rock was an inspiration because he has his Iron Paradise. So I was like, I want that. This, so, is, this is my Iron Paradise. Hey, look, I'm not gonna lie. Nice place. Not quite. Yet. <laughs> not quite. Yet. I'm also smaller. Do you want to give you a shout out, though? Yeah, I mean, check let's that check out. that out. Hundred thousand subscribers. Those are not easy to get. Everybody. I'm check very that. proud of this. We're gonna get one for uh, seven hundred subscribers any day. <laughs> <laughs> we should have it. <laughs> That's cool. What did it? Was that a big achievement for you, though? The seven hundred subscriber one is made of uh, the corn house. It's a toilet paper. Toilet paper. Yeah. 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 Was that a big thing for you? Were you yeah. Like, did you get that in the mail? Like, does it just come like via FedEx? Oh, uh, so it actually doesn't even come automatically. It's like once you get it once you pass the mark so once you pass 100,000 subscribers you have to like fill out this little form and they send it to you for free so it's pretty cool I was I was very proud of it very excited that's really cool and you know we'll we'll look inside as well but you've got some great you were telling us about like this kind of stuff you get I mean because whether you're at an office or a box I mean this is just a smaller version of a CrossFit affiliate really yeah but these nice things go a long way and like you were saying it wasn't really that expensive yeah, like so my whole thing was when I created this office space, I didn't know, I don't know where I'm going next. Maybe I'll stay here, maybe I'll move to a bigger space, maybe I'll move out to the mountains, who knows where I'm going. But I wanted my my office signs and things like that, like the things that inspire me, like you'll see I have a bunch of quotes on the wall too. Yeah. I wanted them to be portable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like I can take this and move Watford headquarters somewhere else and not lose like the original things that I wanted. So we got a bunch of these custom signs and then I basically took my favorite quotes and I put them all over the wall and, and got more on the back. So well, a couple things that I think people should take note of and you'll see when we go into the to the gym area here too, which is like most affiliates branding is a, is a nightmare. Or you go in there, it's just a, it's a hot mess. But consistency and simplicity of the stuff you have going on here. It's just like essentially same font everywhere, same colors, very simple, nothing crazy. And it just creates a really nice flow of the facility and like most CrossFit gyms would be well off to take notes. Yeah, and I appreciate it. And another thing is like the main thing, the reason that Wad Prep has grown at all really in the last several years is everything that I'm not good at, I give other, I pay other people to do. Right. One of which was Brand. coming up with the branding and the color for, for this. Cause I was like, hey, like I like grays and like darks, like just here are my favorite quotes, and then my uh, former assistant came back with all these custom-made signs she found on Etsy, awesome. and yeah, it, cool. it's worked out really well. What is funny, because you say that, it's like, look at the colors you're wearing, yeah. and I'm sure if we went to your house... I'm colorblind, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure this my is... Color, like, actually, the house is like white and, you know, oh, like really? grass and stuff, it's different. This is I like, it's di- very different. Legit um, <laughs> computer area. Three monitors. Like I said earlier. I didn't clean the desk either. This is a real, this is how it's normally. Look, for all the ladies watching to me now for a second, men, you know what's happening. Right? <laughs> oh my, men. <laughs> Three monitors. I have a deviated septum, okay? I blow my nose a lot. He cries, we a, lot. Have, he cries a lot. We, we've all got deviated septums, men. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 
<laughs> oh my god. Really cool area. We walk in, the first thing, you know, Fern and I always attracted to these awesome books. I mean, with one exception, best hour of their day. I keep that locked in the that, case. That's home, you said, yeah, that's at home. <laughs> But these are some of the best books in the world from yeah, an entrepreneurial ones. perspective. I mean, all the Ryan Holiday books. We've talked about essentialism. Do you have the Four Agreements? I do not. You should get that one. I haven't read that Fern one. I, oh, that's a great one. I love Man's Search for Meaning. It was on the yep. five books that I recommended people read. I love just seeing what people read, and it's no surprise, The Alchemist, that you that you are reading similar books to us. For affiliate owners, uh, being a former affiliate owner, uh, this one's fantastic. Actually, this author lives in Boulder. Uh, it's absolutely outstanding. Oh, that's a Boulder guy? Instagram. Yeah, he lives in Boulder. Yeah, that's a great book. I didn't it's realize awesome. it was a Boulder guy. Um, yeah, awesome books here. Fern, cool. what is your go-to? What's your favorite uh, book? So where's, Deep Work is actually a great oh, book. Yes. Yeah. Um, Where's the other one that I saw in here? Phil Knight, that's an amazing book. Uh, yeah. Shoot Arg, and then... Basketball book, of course. Well, Nike, not necessarily basketball, but um, what else is in there? I saw another one earlier. No, but these are all good. I mean, like, it's, it's, not, it's not about collecting books. It's about, like, just always learning, gaining knowledge and stuff like that. So read books that you like. So everybody's like, which book should I read? I'm like, the one that you can make it through is the one that you I haven't read that read. one yet. Yeah. You haven't read this one? No. Nope. This is a tough read. Yeah, I it's know. Great, I tried great reading book. it and then I put it down. I've li I actually, to be fair, I didn't read it. I listened to 24 hour listen. Yeah. It's, but for me. it's a classic. I think it's something all box owners, all, all humans should read. The thing that I do a lot of times is I, so I read a lot and I did, I've had for many, many years, started with business books and then it's turned into all kinds of other stuff yeah. like memoirs and, and self-development, whatever. But what I do is I listen just like you and I also have a Kindle that I can take everywhere because I used to literally travel with like six big books in my yeah. backpack, uh -huh. it yeah. makes sense. But now my whole thing is every time I read a good book, whether I listen or I read on the Kindle, and I'm like, mm, I want to remember this, I buy the physical copy. That's cool. So like this whole shelf right here, these are like awesome of my favorites and I have a few others, you know, spread about. Like this is the business section and a lot of them are just like, I read them, I've listened to them and I'm like, I always want to be reminded of the principles. So I actually buy the physical copy because there's just something about having a tangible book. Oh, are no, these I journals? Like Do you journal? Uh, ooh, I don't know. What are what, what's in there? Uh, phone numbers, there's girls see. phone numbers. There's in there? probably when things. you're not sitting at your desk. Your diary. That, that's a brand new one. I get these are old, but actually, what's really cool is the other day uh, I was at my house and I found all of my original original journals. wad prep ideation awesome. journals from that's like seven really years cool. ago. Like maybe I'll sell a course for twenty dollars that teaches someone how to do this movement. That's awesome. And like yeah. it's it's super cool and I read through them the other day. Yeah, did I'll, you, I'll did you hit a lot of those goals? Yes. <clears throat> hit a lot of, a lot of them. Yeah. And in fact they're like now I have troubles I'm working with the therapist to come up with new goals right now because I've achieved all the ones that I originally set out to do and now it's like, oh what's next? Oh, very so, cool. I'm a doctor if you need yeah. help. I'm not, so don't take any. <laughs> Let's check out the box. Another cool sign. Hold on, we can't skip this. I'm surprised Fern didn't notice that. If any, oh, it's a salt shooter. Yes. If you ever have mosquitoes. flies, mosquitoes, really? mosquitoes oh, yeah. it's great. spiders, any sort of bug that you don't small want. Children. Small children. Yeah. Small children. This makes fly swatting fun. Yeah. What is it? What happens? It shoots salt. It shoots salt. Here, like shoot, it, shoot it, heaven. It's, it's not going to hurt. I promise you. Are you being serious? The safety. Yes. No, let's try it. <laughs> oh fuck! Did it hurt? Not really. See, safe. I told you more than I was I'm expecting. Really, I'm just, I'm just a clown. Okay, can we have a checklist today? Jay just had to do smelling salts and been shot by salts. What else could you do with salts? First year. I'm, the only thing left is a salt enema at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is a. Cool but wait, wait! I do have a question. How are you gonna hit a fly with that thing? Oh, it's, it shoots it's, super it's, far. It shoots like a. It's like a shotgun. Hey, we know. We're finish each other. Nate, is there any mark on my <clears throat> tricep? I've got a new part. Is there a mark on this tricep? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this is a cool space. So this, yeah. what's this whole office space? Like 1,500 square feet, the whole thing? Um, yeah, I want to say 1,200. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So like, so not huge, but like just a lesson in simplicity with regard to the buy. Everybody buys a bunch of stuff that wastes a bunch of space. You just kind of look around. So this is your studio. Yeah. It's where you shoot all your content. Yeah, and it's fully modular. Like exactly what you're about to say. Like everything in here can be moved very quickly. Right. So. Some shoots, when, when we're in here, it'll look completely different. Right. I just 
rearrange everything. I mean, you saw like since the time you guys came, yeah. I moved a lot of the gear out of the way, so now we're gonna have room to do some coaching. Yeah. Like, we can probably push this out of the way super easy. So um, yeah, try to keep it really simple and movable. It's like CrossFit Ikea. Yes, Good. sure. <laughs> Swedish. So on that note, with regard to coaching, I know we're gonna cover a couple of things today, but the open is right around the corner. Okay, people yep. are always looking to get some skills in the open. Jay has no skills, so yeah. hopefully well, we're gonna put your put your coaching. <laughs> I'm to really good at being shot by salt. Yeah, guys, yeah so. I mean you're thick, man. I was I hit you <laughs> yeah. pretty easily. Yeah, we're gonna, keep, we're gonna keep bringing that up. Jay's, Jay's looking a little. He's got that dad bod going on. So um, he's making me feel so good. So the so camera so adds ten pounds. <laughs> so what are we gonna cover today? So uh, we with. Brainstorming from earlier, I think we discovered that we're going to do a little bit of coaching on double unders okay. and toes of bar because I do think those are some of the lowest hanging fruits for people to improve their open scores with uh, regard to skills. I like it. So athletes obviously pay attention, but coaches pay yeah. attention here as well. So you can pick up a couple of little nuggets, and that's all coaching, right? It's not. It's not. There's never ever like one secret. It's like I pick up one little thing here and there as you go, and uh, so. Which one, let's do, let's, let's, let's see Jay. Let's see if you can fix this. Yeah, yeah, fix <laughs> Well, I don't even know what I'm working with yet, so. Perfection, it's already gonna shine up perfection. It's gonna be super here today. XL rope I like this rope, by the way. I mean, we are friends with David Newman, RX Smart Gear, but this is a great rope. Too. I'm friends with Dave, too. He's the man. Yeah. RX Smart Gear makes great rope. And this is cross rope? This is, a, yeah, this a nice is. nice heavy handle. The water, actually, I have a box that shows you, but I have a, uh, it's like an interchangeable jump rope system. So cross rope. So David Hunt owns that. Yeah. From North Carolina, Carolina. awesome a boy. He's a good boss man, man. Really? Yeah, he went to an Eagle Academy. Yeah. He's yeah. Eagle So I'm gonna show show the uh, what did you do earlier? Uh, oh, the, the oh the um, so you can interchange ropes. So. This is the two ounce like speed cable. Um, it's not the fastest cable in the world, but I designed this specifically for people learning double under. So this is the two ounce speed cable and you can just detach the handle and then there's a, a five ouncer that comes with it that's heavier. Uh, and what I always teach is like learning double unders, a lot of people, they do it wrong. So imagine you're trying to learn how to drive a car. Would you want to start with a Lamborghini or I don't know, a Ford Windstar minivan like I did, right? Which one seems like a smarter move? Lamborghini. Okay, so that's how most people do it, right? <laughs> that's how most people is that they'll go out there. Well, like, I actually started with a Lamborghini, I'm very wealthy. <laughs> I started with a Lamborghini, so what's this other car you speak of? <laughs> it's it's me, Ford. It's, Ford. It's, the, it's the car you drive now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> you started here, yeah. now you're here. Yeah. So a lot of people, they're like, I need to learn double unders. And they look at people in the games and they're, they have these super fast, uncoated, super duper cable ropes that are a million miles an hour. So they'll pick that up and they can't figure out why they can't do double unders. And a lot of that is because the rope is spinning too fast. The tolerances are too small. So I tell people to, to tone it back a little bit and drive the minivan. Pick up a rope that has a little bit more weight to it. You're going to make less mistakes. You'll be able to feel it better in your hands, things like that. Is there anything special in the minivan? Yeah. <laughs> no. Stop, no. Stop. Stop. Dirty joke. <laughs> Dirty joke. So me. The, feed, the, the weight. The, no. The feedback on is something important that you brought up. So feedback with the weight, and it's uh, similar on uh, you teach us on a, on a rower. So a lot of people are like, "Hey, put it at one." Well, for newer folks, it's actually be more beneficial to put the damper setting at ten, so they have a little bit more feedback yeah. on there, so they can pull a little bit more. So with regard to the weight on there, this is a really, really good. It doesn't always need to be lighter. They need to be able to feel the rope so they can control it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Two in the front, five in the back. If you get what I'm saying, um, is this the short? This is how you get canceled, by the way. I had no idea this was such an unedited show. Oh, it's edited. Don't worry. Don't edit it. Is this the short version? The short rope? That's the medium. Do you have the, which one is that? This is the large. <laughs> That's a, you don't get Do you have a small? Yeah. yeah. You want a small? Yeah, I'm nice small. Let me try to take it up. Let me see. Sure, you the extra one for a friend, you know. For it's not large. I haven't used a small one in a while. It's going to take a second. Did you help Dave design these? So Dave is the one that came up with the interchangeable idea. Yeah, we just started this. Yeah, I had his first ever set. Same. Video same. Video. I think I might still have him here. He's a good dude. This quick touch is pretty cool. Yeah, it is. All right. Hey, you get this, Nate. Yeah, so like real, real. 
quick. Boom, pinch. Back in there, locked in. And then Dave and I work together too. So here's the heavy one. Should I use this yeah, one? Yeah, I will. I don't know. Let's show the Okay, so the I'll give you a little... I can do double unders. I can do decent sized sets. However, I always get pretty gas during double unders. Okay. So if it's more than 30, I'll get out of breath. Like 30 is probably the number that, you know, throw some snatches in there, like the open, I'm pretty fine. Mm -hmm. 30, 50, once we get to like 50 reps, I'm breathing too heavy to go on to the next. Yeah, okay. Well, let's see with the heavy rope. Let me it's just pretty short now, but this might be too short actually. Okay, well, so should I go, you tell me. I mean, you try, so try with that, and actually I'll listen for something, and then we can always switch you back to the other side. Singles or doubles? Uh, let's just start with, give me five singles into a set of double unders. This is a heavy rope. It is. It might break your toe. We're going to find out. It's sensitive to One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's like so heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. Me around it's heavy. All right. Um, so one thing, I don't know if the audio picked it up, but what's interesting is your single under started by clicking the ground. This is the first thing I listen to, to see if your rope is long enough. So I'll actually demo real quick. So you started with singles, and you can hear the rope tapping the ground, and then you went to doubles, and there was no contact. So what, what that means is that the rope's maybe too short, you're lifting your arm, something's happening where the rope is no longer touching the ground. If the rope's not touching the ground, your feet also can't be touching the ground, but any lift of that rope means that you're increasing your odds of tripping, right? Because the rope is getting closer and closer to your toes. So what I would probably do after maybe like another set or two is I'd probably bump you up to a slightly longer rope. That medium one will probably be better for you. Okay. But yeah, try a few more with the heavy rope. See how, see how it goes. Same thing? <clears throat> yep, same thing. Just five singles into a set of dubs. So you can Woo! see, like, and hopefully everybody can I hear that. I said 30 earlier, it's actually 7. <laughs> hopefully seven. everybody can hear that, but like, you, you can hear the rope spinning, but it's still not making contact with the ground. So let's, we'll take you here, I'll give you the nice, uh, light rope. Okay. And now is this the same size? But... This is a medium, so medium. we just added 6 inches yeah. to the it's length like, of the rope. And it's lighter. It's gonna feel lighter too, it's probably gonna feel weird, but let's do the same but thing. But it's a different rope. It's a different, different rope. weight cable. It's a different, different weight cable. Weight. I could dig up the heavy one if you want. No, that just feels better. Yeah, with your with your level of athleticism and raw talent being so high, I would I would start with. Uh, I wouldn't have you go to a super heavy rope. It's fun to train with though. But here's what I want you to do. We're gonna add a little nuance to it. So with a lot of athletes, when I'm trying to get them to pick up the rhythm of a double under, which you have already. A lot of athletes don't have it. It's like a dance move, right? They, they, they gotta find the beat. And actually I have put a strong correlation to people who can dance can do double unders well. People who can't dance have a hard time learning double See, unders. See, I can dance. I can dance, but I can't do double, so I'm Ooh, weird. Okay. Cause I'm not sure. All right, I wasn't gonna do it. <laughs> Me, oh dear God. Yeah. How long are you going to keep this up? <laughs> I was just going to Can you do the Carlton? We're, we're just yeah. going to... Nope. Nope. Nice try though. Yeah. Go ahead and grab this one. Up. All right. Let's grab the rope. Is this, am I doing the flossing? Nope. Yeah. You got something. something. So now we know why you can't do double unders very well. Um, so what I'll teach people is this concept of, of big singles. So a lot of people will do single unders, they just jump a couple inches in the air. So big singles are what I define as a, a single under where you're jumping high enough to do a double under. So for your big singles, I just want you to jump as if you're jumping as high as you should for a double under. So basically twice the, the height of a normal single under, like about like this high. So do five of those, nice, big, and slow, and then see if you can go into your double unders without even changing your jump. That's a big one that helps a lot of people like understand the timing. I gotta be honest, I don't think I can do this. Well, you're I don't think you can either. But. Well, we're gonna try and then I'll show you how it's done. Five? Yep, double. five big singles. Big singles, big right singles. into doubles. Yes. Five big singles, right into doubles. There we go. I told you. I know myself very well. Nice, relax. 
Hopefully you guys can hear that, 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 that this rope is better sized for him. And it might be a little long, so maybe somewhere in the middle there between the 8-footer and the 8-6. Yeah, that one felt a little short. This one feels a tiny bit long. Yeah, but what's cool is that during the double harness, you could hear that distinctive click both spins. So I was trying to, was trying to not show you how out of breath I was. Yeah. Do you, do you, that's not working. Do you have the smelling salts? <laughs> I need some. So what I, what I try to show people, like we talk about, you know, verbal cueing, tactile cueing, visual. Um, the visual thing that I try to teach people is like, your single unders, hopefully, your jump doesn't need to change from singles to doubles, right? And then you're good. So the, the, the goal here is like, I teach them the timing of the rope by doing those big singles, and then we go into double unders. And then one of my favorite drills is the penguin clap. Well, you know the story of the penguin tap. Yeah, tell me. I created the penguin Yeah, tap. and then I stole it from you, you and then I claimed it. I'm waiting for the check. The mail. <laughs> uh, it's still young, young, young. It's mail slow. Okay. These days. Yeah, it is slow. So what I would have the athlete do is they put the rope down. We practice the timing. We practice that transition of a single under into a double under. I know you can jump high enough. Now let's try to combine it all together with the actual like timing of the jump rope. So with the penguin clap, this is also a classic dance move. Um, can they dance? They have beat. Because a lot of people they do penguin clap and they just go. And this is all over the place. Ideally, what you want is you want to clap as you get to the top and maybe right as you turn over and start coming down. Or uh, more accurately, it's clap on the way up for the first one and then like right at the apex for the second one. So that mimics the double under spin timing much better than just, I just hope and pray and spin the rope as fast as I can. Because it's like a distinct one, two, one, two, one, two. So let's try it. Let's see, see some penguin claps. This is the first time I've worried about embarrassing myself. Well, you invented this drill, so you're yes. gonna be really good at it. Yeah, it's, let's see it. Right, more. Penguin tap. Ackerman penguin tap. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> Ackerman taps. Good. Solid. Maybe it's time we got off a little bit there. That's okay. <laughs> Fixed it. Oh, yeah, it happened. All right, so uh, with most athletes, the only other drill that I'm going to teach them in my progression, so we've, we've done big singles, we've done Ackerman taps, we've done... I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. Um, obviously, you practice some double unders. Another one that I'll have people do is I'll just teach them speed singles. So I want to make sure that the athlete's comfortable enough spinning the rope as absolutely fast as they can. So speed singles is just... I'm not jumping really high, I'm just trying to spin the rope as quickly as I can until I trip. So, the benefit of everything else made sense. The benefit of this is probably teaching the speed of the race. Yeah, teaching them how to actually like move that rope quickly. Because a lot of times, I don't know, you guys have probably seen it, where like people, they, the only way they do singles is like, right, they like, they like barely move their wrist and they have no action and they can't move the rope fast. It's kind of rare, but it does happen. So this is like, I'm forcing people to actually get that rope spinning quicker than they would normally spin it. When we talk about the muscle up, at, at the level one seminar, we always say, hey, there's two pieces of strength, pull up and dip. There's two pieces of technique, false grip, transition. Yep. Right, so what would you say with the double under? Because what I'm hearing is there's wrist speed mm -hmm. and timing. Yes. Is there anything else I'm not thinking about? Um, yeah, jump height too. Hi. Like there are, there are some athletes where uh, the jump, like, so that's why, I mean, obviously we just threw you into the double unders, but most athletes I'm going to have them do some sort of, like, show me big singles at least. And there are some people who they either can't jump high enough because, you know, they might weigh a little bit more, or they just haven't, they don't jump very much, so they don't know how to jump so any higher. Some older clients are going to be doing power hops and stuff like that. Yeah, and then, or you get the, you know, you get people who they, they can do it, but they just don't know how to bound. They don't know how to like spring off their toes. So it'll be like, you know, and they have that pause. And if they have that pause, and they have that like little baby jump in between skips, we gotta eliminate that. So I start by making sure that you can jump. You can. Jump height, wrist speed, and then timing. Yes. Are really the three things you're gonna work on 
with your new people. Yep. Or anybody. Yep. For, for double ups. Absolutely. Okay. So fast singles. Yeah. Let's see. See how many you can get really fast. One. That was zero. Zero. All right. This is the hardest part, by the way. Like in all the double ups seminars that I do, like this is the one where like I trip almost immediately. Every but the time. unique thing about double ups also <laughs> is every rope you need to learn very quickly. Yeah, that, and that's what, so one of my like, I guess, soapboxes uh, is like, you know that you're proficient at double unders when you can pick up anyone's rope that's Shouldn't matter. adequately sized and you should be able to hit the unbroken. Regardless of weight. Regardless of weight, I mean, assuming it's not like a three pound jump rope or something like that, but like, I can go to any gym and be like, hey, can I use your rope and knock out 50, no problem. Yeah, okay. Speed again. Can I start slow and then ramp up? You, if you want. Is that scaling? Yeah, 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 a little bit, but that's fine. Shit! It's hard? You are not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, this part's very difficult. That's the nicest thing you said today, actually. You said that it's like nice get nicer. It's, it's yeah. difficult. You know, it's interesting, it's just like, and this is like, so this, this whole teaching progression, I think is important for there we go. coaching. There we go. From a standpoint of, these progressions are not just useful for people who have double unders or don't have double unders. Yep. Getting somebody to go back and forth between the two yep. will, in, will yes. increase their competency with a rope. So at the end of the day, we're not teaching them to do double unders, we're teaching them to jump. Yep. And if they can change cadence, if they can change height, then I'm just making them a yes. more efficient athlete with the jumper, regardless of what it is that we're doing. Yes. Well, and it's the same thing at level one. It's, oh, I don't do kipping pull-ups. I only do butterfly. Right. And if you can't take a step back, just like... Switch. Intermittently, just like go back and forth. Yeah. I struggle with singles. No, we know. We saw it. <laughs> do you? <laughs> but I mean, that's me being better. When I first was like, okay, I should probably learn singles again a couple yeah. years ago, I was like, I can't do singles. Yeah, it's so interesting. And exactly what you said, Fern, is like the... Um, the reason I do that like big single into double unders is to teach them what I call slow double unders. Because how many people do you know, the only double under speed they have is you know, like super fast and they're like, yeah, no wonder you're out of breath. Yeah, show me control, show me can't change. Especially pace, show me all talking about the open, right? Depending on where the double unders fit, they should probably be your recovery portion yeah. of a workout. So you need to be able to modulate that speed. Yeah, in our double under course, I literally have um, like one of the sessions we make people uh, practice going from fast to slow, and then do sets from slow to fast. Where like I'll have them do a couple warm up jumps, and then as their jump gets shorter, they speed increases until they're going as fast as they can. Like, and then do that the opposite way, and it helps so much because again, most people. Once they do double and they're like, oh, I can do them, I'm done now. Yeah, so we'll do progressions like that. We'll have them go back and forth intentionally between singles and doubles and even play around with their footwork too. And this is where you can take somebody who's pretty proficient with a jump rope and you can really start to challenge the neurological components of the jump rope to make them better yes. at the double under because in, in, like in the context of this progression, like we're not, he's not really under any duress. But if I can make him better now, and I can make him, if I can really challenge the neurological component of the jump rope, that will transfer to when he's in the back half of the workout and very tired. That's where these progressions come in for the athletes when they're good, when they're fresh, not good when they break down. And this is where you can really start to challenge all that stuff. And, and based on that, isn't this good to do? If you're coaching a class, it's like we talk Support. about. Well, yeah, we talk about. Well, you're, you're a warming people up. But you're also taking a beginner from potentially no doubles to doubles, and then also taking your veteran, you know, like myself who has doubles, but refining them, because that's the biggest disconnect in coaching. Yeah. How do you keep the new people and the veterans involved in a class? Yeah, and so it's, it's this. And this, so this is, a, I'm all talking about these like very simple drills, and then I combine them in this one progression. Right. If you ever come to one of my double under seminars or even some of my courses and videos, it's like, this simple progression works very, very often. Uh, it's five speed singles into five big singles, put the rope down, five penguin claps, and then you finish it off by doing five big singles into a set of double ones. Can you show us real quick? Yeah, exactly. So basically, once I, in my seminars, once I teach them all these drills, I say, all right, here's the progression we're gonna work on. I'm gonna go around the room and I'm gonna like tweak and work with each one of you. We start with five really fast singles, and then switch it up. So right now we're talking about that rope speed change, that jump change, and put the rope down. 
uh, five pangolin claps, but I'm not really counting and I don't make them count either, but just several of each. <sighs> Take a nice deep breath and then try to put it all together into a set of double rings. Right? And like, I can drill those four different things and the breakthroughs are unbelievable. It's always every time I go through the drills, just like I taught you, we might do a little bit more foot work. I'll make sure everyone has a decent rope. And then like the first set, almost always it's like PR, 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 because people have never done a progression. They just pick up the rope and they trip. Yeah, if you want doubles, do singles, guys, and yeah. stuff like that. And so if I was gonna do this in a class and we're gonna take Ben's progression, we think seven minutes, like progress people through maybe yeah. how long before you get to that one right there. Yeah. They're warmed up ready to go instead of just mailing in the jump rope. Be like, uh, for my people that have uh, double unders, just get warmed up, do some. If you uh, don't have those, do some singles. Like that's just not great coaching. Yeah. But taking people through these progressions keeps them engaged, number one, because even the people who are good are gonna mess up. Yeah. And I actually think it's good for new people to watch experienced athletes mess up like that and this is an easy you way. make them do speed singles they're gonna mess up yeah i mean case in point it's very it's difficult if you've never practiced in midpool pick up speed well, and i think just like we talked about with kevin and the progressions it's also just showing up with a plan right and a progression yeah yeah are cool. you gonna max that yeah i'll just do it let's see how many you can get how many you can get 100. You ready i'm ready i am ready are you going to yeah might as well I've definitely got my money here. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably trick you. The pressure's off. All right, here we go. You counting? No. <clears throat> one, two, three, four. Five. I'll count them for ten. Three, two, one. Ten. Twenty. Shoulder started to get yeah. tight, the arms started to straighten out. My triceps oh, are cramping. Oh, hey, with the new rope though. Oh, was that 80? 81? With the new rope? Oh, That's good. Not bad. Watch out. Not bad. Cool. Good. Thank you. Cool. Just like we said, double honor should be a rest. In the middle of your mouth. That's exactly what it felt like. <laughs> I'm What's your, uh, do you teach breathing at all in there? Yeah, so. Oh, that was the thing. I didn't breathe. So, I'm, I'm curious, were you counting your own reps? Yeah. So that. Well, we were on this, we were on the same number. Yeah, it's really, yeah, he quit counting, he quit counting a lot, like 30 border. Like okay, that. so that to me, I think is where most athletes, like they lose track of their, like you can tell someone breathe. Right. I don't necessarily teach when to breathe, because I think that's, with double unders, maybe case by case. But I do teach people in our courses to practice without counting. Right. Just do double mm -hmm. unders and breathe. Do it for 30 seconds. So I, know, I know Buddy Lee will teach every four reps. Should be like an exhale, inhale. But if you're huh. trying to count, then you can't do that because right. I'm trying to worry about breathing. So, but then you can start working on that together. But I do the same thing. It's just like work, just work on breathing so you're just not worrying about the count. And yeah. then you'll be able to pair the two. Exactly. Things. It's funny you exactly. say that though because I will say in the open is always when I feel best because so somebody else is counting yeah. me. And you, you see with the games too, like we judge the games and they'll just be like, tell me when to go. Right. Yeah. And that's what we do. Like, we're giving them a little bit of a heads up. Yeah. But they're not counting either. And when you can just, like you said, think about your breath, I think that's probably why I stopped counting. I was like, I'm too out of breath. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. 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 I think it makes a big difference. And then you get. Oh, I stopped. Yeah. More than you. We know that. Yeah. yeah. More than you. I ended with a good triple under. <laughs> Did you really? Can you do triple unders? Yeah. Kind of. I mean, I haven't practiced in a while. You sure. want to see something that blows up your, your calves, though. Like my calves have never been more sore Triple than after oh, practicing. Yeah, that's a lot of pounding. It's a lot of pounding. It's aggressive. Let's oh, that's great. Let's talk, let's talk toes tomorrow. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do things. So, 
You ready? Alright. So I'm, I gotta do this tomorrow? No, yeah, you're too out of breath. I'm you gonna to I'll be back tomorrow, guys. Good day. Yeah. So as I'm sure you know and I know that they teach progressions should be something ideally that the athlete can take and remember when they leave the gym. That's why I love that double under progression so much. It's so simple. There's no crazy drills. There's no fancy equipment. It's just simple. This one, I will use a little bit of equipment uh, because I think it, it's a good visual cue for a lot of people and tactile cue. But my toes of our progression pretty much is the same way that I teach pull-ups. Mm -hmm. Without the pull-up, we're just gonna start with the arch and the hollow. So what I would normally do is, my favorite drill actually is on the floor. Yeah. This is, this is simply to make everyone laugh normally. But I, what I do is I teach them the hollow and the arch position. So I'm gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna lay everyone out on the ground and I'm gonna say this is what a hollow looks like. And I want everyone to roll to their left. And this is what the arch looks like. You should feel it in your glutes, your lower back, squeeze nice and tight. So once we've established that, I'll say, all right, everybody, lay down on the ground. So do it. And then I'll just be like, so hollow, and then I'll be like, arch, and roll. And then I'll say, back the same direction, hollow. And keep going that same direction. Oh, wrong, so you're making new purpose. Got it. Right? So like, it's just like a funny little thing. Like, if you can get your class laughing, yeah. that's, like, that's pretty much how I coach all my classes. Yeah, Try to get people yeah. laugh. That gets one of the checklists in our coach evaluations. Yeah? Yeah, group laughs. Sweet. So, once we've established the hollow and arch position, then I actually bring them up to the bar. And a lot of times I start with just, especially if I don't know you, I'll do static holds or, or more like slow transitions from hollow to arch. So, hop up and show me that perfect hollow position that you had. The core nice and tight, she's gonna come punch you. And then when I say arch, same thing, I'll have everyone dangling from the bar. I wanna try to get them to hold and see if they can eliminate the death swing. And hollow, good, and arch, nice. So that's what I'll teach right away. Just hang from the bar. And this is where people start to realize like, wow, I don't have as much control as I thought. You'll see people just start to swing around a lot. And a lot of times those are the people that eventually are gonna have trouble with the, right. the actual kipping toes of So next, I add some dynamics to it. So let me do some visual cueing. It's like, all right, now what I want everybody to do, hop up on the bar and let's practice five kip swings. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start hollow, so hollow, and arch, one, two, three, and I'll usually break people up into like, you four, go, all right, you four, go. Try it so I can actually see what's going on there. A lot of times the fault that I'll see is, see people start like right. this, and they're doing the hollow and arch in front of the bar, and the hollow and arch behind the bar, trying to uh, teach balance. So one thing that I and that's And that's a good point from a coaching standpoint, when you, in the progressions, if you see that, that's a peek into the future. Yeah. So I know they're gonna have problems once we get to that full movement, so I can try to clean that up here. Yep. It's not just for the sake of having a progression. Yep. It's gonna, sh should show me something. Yep, exactly. So it, this doesn't work for everyone. I'm a very visual learner, so sometimes if I have an example athlete that's death swinging or Tarzan swinging, I'll be like, hey, like, hey can I use you as, as an example? Sometimes they're like, yeah, sure, I don't care, whatever. And then I'll bring people over and I'll be like, hey, let's check out this athlete's hip. So do me a favor and do some like yep. Tarzan swinging. So I'll be like, all right, everybody look at where his body is right now and then drop. I'll be like, where was 98% of his body? And a smart athlete will be like, in front of the bar. And then I'll do the same in the back swing. <clears throat> What I tell people is that at any point during the movement, you should have part of your body behind the bar and part of your body in front of the bar. Whether it's the, the, the hollow or the arch, that happens. That's the same with pull-ups as well. So what I teach people is I say, come from the side and watch me. And then what I'll do is I'll be like, hey, watch me. Watch as I do this kip. I'm gonna stay perfectly balanced under the bar. Meaning when I'm in my hollow, my head and shoulders will be behind the bar, feet in front. When I do the arch, head and shoulders in front of the bar, feet will be behind. And at any point during the movement, I should have part of my body in front of the bar and part of my body behind the bar. If at any point I realize that I'm all the way out in front or all the way behind, you know that you're probably death swinging. So I kind of like, I teach that to people who are like, okay, like, I get it. People like my dad are like, yep, yep, visual learner, it's physics, I got it, like they pick it up. But what's cool is like the rest of the class, I can tell someone like, hey, you're all the way out in front. Right. Or hey, you're all the way behind. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember what that meant. Okay. So that's a little thing I threw in there. Cool. All right, next is what I teach 
or what I teach is some elevates. I call these kipping elevates. I don't know what they're actually called. Levers. Yeah, so or like kip swing, just the kip, the actual yeah. kip swing plus the kip, yeah. So what I do is I teach people with the toes to the bar. If you try to get your toes to the bar and your torso is directly under said bar, it's very difficult to make room for your feet to get all the way up there, right? He's an exceptional athlete, so he's able to do it, but most people can't. But it also creates an unnatural position. Right, you're, you're swinging forward. So what I tell people next is that in that hollow position, I start to make space for my legs by pulling down actively on the bar. I call this lever, or kip lever, lever, depending on where you're from. So it looks like this. So I'll have him hop up, do a couple hollow arch, and then I'll tell them to actually start pulling down the bar a little bit longer. So see if we can get our head and shoulders up and away from the start position. So just actively pulling down the bar like this. A lot of times in warm-ups too, I like especially if someone's having an issue where they like can't seem to get that, I'll get them to grab a PVC or get them to grab a band and just do some straight arm banded pull downs like this. Be like that right there. That's what we need to do when you're actually kipping. And this is where, so thinking about advanced athletes, this is where I would give my better athletes a, like a stretch goal. So I'll tell them, hey, like, try to get your eyes in line with yeah. the, sorry, if I was doing this, I would try to have them pressing down to the point where they were getting their eye line yeah. in line with the pull-up bar so yeah. that they're like, they're really forced. Because like, my better athletes, that's not a big struggle for them. Mm -hmm. But if I really want them to press down, yep. I gotta give them a target, so we'll yep. give them like a stretch goal. It's my favorite in like actual, Bar, mus bar muscle ups are like an iteration of toes of bar in my Correct. opinion, right? It's like uh, in my bar muscle up seminars, I'll be like, who can get the highest right. on the kip lever? Uh, and I've actually had a guy do a bar muscle up that way where he kept his arms completely straight. It was amazing. Um, <laughs> Technique. <laughs> Another thing you can do is like, whether like I, I could say like get your eyes really high or actually come back and do some, especially if it's a smaller class and be like, hey, I'm gonna yeah. hand back here. Same thing, you can hit your shoulder to one hand. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you're trying to actually get them yep. to feel your hand at the back, that tactile cue. Yep. All right, so the next thing I teach, the next uh, level of progression, I teach a knee tuck. I know, I know gymnasts really like keeping their legs straight, but the way I teach a lot of uh, beginner athletes specifically, which is kind of where Wad Prep thrives, is the knee tuck, the tuck and flick method, where rather than trying to keep people, you know, perfectly straight, I'll get them to actually start just tucking their knees into their chest a little bit to set us up for that actual toes to bar. So, hop up, example athlete. I want you to give me three kipping levers, just like you did, nice and high, except tuck your knees to your belly button. Just tuck them, good. Tuck them, very good, and relax. Next step after that, for most athletes, is the flick. So, again, I always do caveats, like, hey, listen, if you want to keep your legs fully extended and do like the more purest uh, gymnastics kip with the toes of bar, totally fine. Right. But I found a lot of beginner athletes, they just can't quite do that. I mean, yep. the example that I use is like, is it easier to hold this position or this position, right? right? Like, yep. obviously, well, changes the lever of full, like all that. Yeah. yeah. So, what I teach people is once you've done the, the knee tuck, we'll do a knee tuck, maybe get them to do a couple, and then I just say, just flick your feet towards the bar. And a lot of times it'll end up like that. Sometimes you actually have people start to kick the bar yeah. and it's not an issue for them. For a lot of people, they'll start getting their feet right about here, mm -hmm. okay? For a beginner athlete, that's what I'm gonna use this thing or some sort of tactile cue. I mean, you can, I can stand here with a PVC pipe if I wanted. You could have a friend hold their hand. Like there's so a lot that's of how we'll teach it in the class, just to, just to establish an endpoint. Exactly, you wanna have, you have give them a target even if this isn't quite the target yet. But, uh, again, this is called a Tink Toes to Bar Tool. Random company on Instagram sent it to me. I think it's really freaking cool. So all you do is you, I'm too short, of course. Um, all you do is you hang this thing from the bar. And at some point, you like lock it into the bar. Very easy to set up. I just had it set it up recently. So this thing kind of clamps, boom, to the bar. And now I can adjust it. So let's say there's an athlete, I guess you're gonna have to cut it. Um, but let's say you have an athlete, we'll do the exact same progression, and I'm like, hey, all I want you to do is get your toes to that band. Kick that band. And it's great, because now he can do reps 
without what normally happens. Like, so, uh, oh, I'll just demo. Yeah. So this what, is the problem, right? So this is what everybody's What normally about. happens is it turns into this, right. and then this big backswing. Yep. People, and then they're just doing this, and then <laughs> I'll get about to fly, fly off. Or they'll like do partial reps, and they'll, they'll start here, mm -hmm. and then by the end of the class, they're, they're here. Right, so this just gives an athlete who can't quite get their toes all the way to the bar a target, and just like a lot of progressions and modifications, it's pretty much infinitely scalable. Right. Like I can take out this pin and pull this up. Yeah, I can pull it up or bring it in closer. I can bring it yeah. in closer. Like the amount of people, like this is probably my favorite setting, is like really close and really yeah. high. Because a lot of people they just can't quite get those last few inches. I think that's almost always just due to lap strength. They're not quite getting as much like lat elevation. Yeah. But yeah, this and this drill eventually, once an athlete can demonstrate that they can do like 10 reps to here. I'll take away the the uh, the tool and just make it kick a little bit harder. Yeah, and a lot I think, of times we'll solve it. I think the kind of one of the, the the metric that we'll use for when we teach it in class is the one thing that I want to stay intact the entire time. Whether I'm using this or they get their toes to the bar or whether we have them just pull their feet up to some sort of random height exactly. is, is the kip swing needs to stay intact. So at the point where I'm using this height or a hand or something like that at which the kip swing breaks down, it's too high. Yep. So we come back down to that height where they can keep the kip swing intact so they can develop more time under tension, more control, kind of going back to the double under thing we were talking about earlier. Like for me, it's about control. Yep. So I want them to show control. This is arbitrary, guys. Like, it's a it's a target that we have yeah, for, yeah. for some sort of you know competition metric. It's not about that. I want them to show control. It's hip flexion, midline stability. You know, it's shoulder medium, all these things. But like, what I want them to show is control in here. And this is just an additional tool because this is like this tactile feedback, right? For you know, if they're like kind of going like you're talking about. For if I did have an athlete that was, you know, kind of using just that metric. Like that starts to yeah. degrade over time, but, but this they'll miss it. At which point they can slow down, yep. do yep. whatever they need to. So that's really cool. And it doesn't have to be, like I think this tool is really cool, but it, it could be a spotter with the PVC pipe. Or yeah. like you said, like even in like as you're coaching the progression, you make them demonstrate you know ten reps or right. five reps or whatever to that target where you're actually keeping them accountable. Yep. And then once they pass that, you're like, all right. Stay at that level the rest of the workout, and then you can always come back and give them a, a quick PVC check if you needed to. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Yeah. You got any uh, any surprises for the open? You got some stuff? <laughs> no surprises. We just we grind during the open, man. I am so excited that the, all the workouts are this at noon. That makes me so happy. It's a lot more time. Uh, a lot more time for me because I normally am here till like two in the morning. Because um, we we basically as soon as the workouts come out, I come up with a game plan, talk to a couple of my coaches. And we just create content for hours. That's cool. So now I'll be able to go to bed, hopefully at a decent yeah, time. Yeah, that was kind of your breakout. So yeah. when the open comes around, if you guys are looking for stuff, check out Live Prep. Yeah. Thanks for having us, dude. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, pleasure having you guys. And yeah, coaches or affiliate owners or whatever, if you or your athletes need help going from scale to RX, I know, again, that's like kind of an arbitrary mm -hmm. metric, but that's what a lot of us, I remember when I started CrossFit, like, that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why Live Prep exists, is not to help people become super high level games athletes, I'm trying to help people fall in love with CrossFit by giving them those aha moments. Like when, when he hit his first 10 on Broken Double Arms today, you could see he just like lit, his, his face lit up with excitement. That's, that's what we try to facilitate at Watt Prep and we're happy to help. Awesome, thanks Bob, appreciate Sweet. it. Thanks Matt. Thank you Matt. Hi Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms, or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.